Hello, hello, and welcome to the Flying Cat Marketing interview series. Today, I have Mackenzie Kiernan, who is marketing manager at AutoHost, which is a guest screening platform for hotel and short-term rental companies, basically helping property managers vet their guests. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, we've been chatting for a while over email, um, and it felt like we knew each other, and it turns out that we had never actually met in person, so podcast is always a great place to do that. <laughs> <laughs> One day in person, too, maybe. One day in real, per- in real yeah, life, person. Sure. <laughs> when you come to Barcelona, or maybe I'm going to go over there to Canada. Yeah. Um, so before I hit record, we were actually talking about how auto host came to be, um, and then also talking about how uh, you share the solution, not not just your software, what it is and what it does, but actually what you're trying to do, which is protect hoteliers and, and property managers. So do you want to tell the story again of how AutoHost came to life? You were saying that it started as a property management company. Yeah. So first, so we were a property management company operating out of Toronto, and we were just dealing with all these struggles similar to other property management companies as we grew and began to scale with more and more properties. We found it harder to actually get a proper handle on who we were hosting, right? So the security part of our operations was lacking. So to fix some of the problems we were encountering, like parties and fraudulent bookings from certain OTAs that we were aware of, we were trying to implement this manual guest screening process. So having our guest services team involved in like vetting the guests. But obviously as you grow and scale, this type of process is like prone to errors and bad judgment calls. And we wanted to leave all biases and um, any possibility of having just a bad call out of it completely. Um, But still we were, and still we were having all these issues along the way. And then one time we were actually like hijacked by some gangs who infiltrated our properties and got into multiple of our properties. And that's where we were kind of like, okay, that's it. We need some sort of solution that's automated and systematic that can solve these problems we're having. And that's where we realized that, you know, we're, we're not the only ones dealing with this in the industry. Mm-hmm. There's actually a void. So that's why auto host was built to fill that void in the industry. So how is it working now? Are you, do you guys still have that property management company? Oh, I knew the name. Quick stay. Quick stay. I, yeah. I was, I was thinking of QuickBooks and I was like, that's not a property <laughs> management company. Not quite. Um, so Toronto actually like really cracked down on short-term rentals and we, um, the re- restrictions and regulations surrounding them are really um, aggressive right now. And we're focusing our attention solely on auto hosts just because um, we have such a strong background in cybersecurity that one of the CEOs um, is a cybersecurity expert. So we really wanted to focus on auto host and our mission to protect the industry. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting that you all come from a background um, that's so close to the problem that you're trying to solve. I mean, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but you also come from a background of hospitality, right? I mean, it, you joined auto host not as a marketing person. So I, I joined, Quickstay, I mean, yeah. So I joined quick say as a marketing person, but I, I dealt with like the listing creation at the very beginning. Like I've been with uh, the company for quite a while now. So I've kind of like seen all the troubles that we encountered along the way. Like I was part of every process. So I saw all of the breakdowns that we ended up having to solve. Um, so like, I see the necessity of, auto host and not even just auto host itself, but the need for some sort of security process and guest screening. So let's talk a little bit about marketing um, because you were, you were mentioning before we started recording that you're sharing about the solution. You're talking about how to actually help ho- hosts and hoteliers stay safe. Um, and I was asking you, did you find that uh, most of your customers are coming after they've had a problem? So they had fraud or they had um, a big party at their house and then they say, okay, wait, I need to find the solution. Or are you finding a way to see that this is a need before it happens? 
So I feel like it's definitely a combo. Like we see companies that are like, oh, like there's been a party, there's been something like we need to implement some sort of solution immediately. And on the other hand, we've seen companies that have, you know, been seen uh, media releases or news articles about parties or things happening in other rentals and being like, okay, we need to be proactive. So it's kind of, a, it's a bit of both like the proactive operators and then responding to some sort of incident as well. And so our main goal is more so to educate and the necessity of having some sort of security process in place to avoid any potential incidents of parties or fraud or criminal activity that could be really detrimental to any sort of business, like not even the reputation, but also your ability to grow and your ability to connect with new building managers and things like that. It's just really a huge cost that can be avoided. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys have been doing all of this education. I mean, a lot of the marketing that you do is just organic, right? SEO, content marketing, social yep. media marketing, and guest blog posting and those kind of things. Yeah. So we, we really want to connect with potential clients or even property managers who just on the problems that they're having, because they're the problems that we were having as well. And we really believe that we're the best at what we're doing. So we're not really, we're not really selling the product, but selling what we're doing and what other property managers should be doing. And just around the whole concept of responsible hosting, uh, just for the sake of the industry and for the industry, industry to keep growing and prospering every operator has their own role and due diligence to keep problems from happening and to keep guests like property managers themselves and the community safe. Mm -hmm. So I love this approach because it shows that you have a lot of passion about what needs to be done and how to educate people. And I think that that's the kind of marketing that works best in the end. It's a longer time to get return, Um, (laughs) but it's really what's building your brand as the go-to in security, operational security. We just want to establish ourselves as like the expert in the industry for security and cybersecurity and guest screening. And, and we know that for a property, a proper, sorry, security process to be in place, like we might be only just part of the puzzle, right? So it's also important to monitor the property after, um, after the reservation starts. So like guest screening is important to be proactive before the reservation starts, but for that extra, you know, peace of mind, it's also important to have some sort of property monitoring solution in place. So it's just advocating for responsible hosting and for doing your due, your due diligence as an operator to just, yeah, keep every stakeholder as secure and safe as possible. Yeah. So the two of you right now, you said that there are two of you on your marketing team. What are you guys doing most regularly? What does your, what does your day-to-day look like? Um, Cause it sounds like you're really, really immersed in, um, in cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious as to how you educate people who don't really know that much about it or what, what it is on your, your day-to-day operations as a marketer, how you share that very technical <laughs> information with people who aren't as familiar with it. It's, it's funny you say that because we had a meeting this morning where we were discussing like a new kind of off product that we want to be launching as well. And like I, you know, by nature, I'm not an incredibly technical person, but I've become a more technical person as I've worked with, you know, a cybersecurity company like Autohost. But so when my approach to marketing is like, OK, are we speaking to the me's of, of the world who, you know, this doesn't come second nature to me. This is something that I'm learning as well and learning to, you know, approach the terms and the language and the messaging, or are we speaking to, you know, an expert themselves in cybersecurity? So it's about like knowing your audience and mm-hmm. breaking it down accordingly. Right. Because I, <laughs> oh, <hello. laughs> We're doing a podcast, buddy. <laughs> sorry, so cute. Oh, sorry. Quick side note. Is this the cat? Like from flying. This is, this is the flying cat. Yeah. This is the mascot. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he's, he's already gone. I would have showed him anyway. <laughs> um, sorry. Totally derailed my thought. Um, 
Um, you were saying if you were talking to people who are well versed in cybersecurity or property managers who are curious but may not know that much about it and how to kind of divide your messaging. Right. And that's just part of the education piece, right? Like knowing if you're speaking to, um, like, are we speaking the head of, to the head of operations who's running like their operations team or maybe like the guest support manager who's looking for a solution for their team? It like, it totally depends on that person when it comes to how we're marketing to them or their knowledge of cybersecurity and security solutions and things like that. So how do you actually divide that out into your content strategy? I mean, um, you have separate pieces for different personas or how do you categorize it? Um, that's just something, honestly, that we're, that we're working on and working through and something that we've been wanting to do going forward is, um, like there's nothing more telling and like more like that connects better with people and helps them understand than like data itself. Yeah. And, we're a data company. So we get a lot of, you know, we collect a lot of data from our clients and that's just something that we're always processing and analyzing and reanalyzing. So we're trying to figure out the best way to work with our data and to, you know, share it in our content in a way that's digestible, but also like, Oh wow. Like this is the type of stuff that's out there. Like this is something that could happen to my business. Like this is like, these are the risks I face. I need to do something about it. Like, and we don't, we're not shoving auto hosts in your face. We want you to be like, okay, these are the risks. Like we are confident that we're the best we do, but we want people to be aware of what risks they face. That's such a good technique um, to use the data that you get from running your business. How have you guys used it so far? Have you, you create some white papers or. So we've created some white papers and some case studies and what we, cause we work with risk scores. So when a reservation comes in um, it's assigned a risk score based on a number of different characteristics um, surrounding the reservation. So we, it's just about, obviously there's tons of privacy issues and we can't release anything too, too specific, but we can, we're working on like having a better way to analyze the data as a whole and make better conclusions out of it. Because that's not only for creating marketing content, but it's actually to improve the performance of the tool. 100%. Yeah, cool. So you guys, um, what is your next goals in, in marketing? I noticed that you have been ramping up your personal branding efforts. Um, how is that working for you? And when are you going to get the rest of the team to jump on board? Yeah, I'm going to share them, share this with them. <laughs> um yeah that's definitely a goal of mine like that's something I wanted to do for a long time because I think that you know it's just as powerful for the company to release something or to share something or to educate or provide value but it's also valuable for you know the team like to show a little bit about the people the faces behind the company right I want to everyone work so hard at like every day for auto hosts and I want everyone to start sharing our sources and sharing our resources and sharing our blogs and sharing our case studies and also sharing their thoughts, you know, on security, cybersecurity, the industry as a whole, like, especially having that background in property management, like our team has been through a ton with these problems and struggles that could really connect with a potential client. So it's just about, Right now, yeah, we're definitely in a phase where I want to start encouraging everyone and, you know, keep telling myself to be posting more and sharing more and developing our personal brands, not just for ourselves, but for the company as well, because we're just representations of auto hosts, right? Like I, when I post something on LinkedIn or wherever I'm like, it's clear from my LinkedIn that I'm, I'm, you know, a worker of auto hosts, it's just, I think it's really important to just work on your personal brand. I love that you're doing that and that you're pushing everybody in the company to do it. I think it's so, so important for employees, team members to build their personal brand. Um, Even if you're not talking specifically about auto host, it helps the company. Even if you're just talking about yourself and your own experience, it helps your career. It helps the company. Um, I think what's really nice about uh, building your personal brand and showing your passion for 
cybersecurity, property management, and those kind of things. It's it also helps the employer brand that AutoHost has, and it'll attract the right kind of people when you guys are starting to grow even more. Um, the right kind of remote people. If you guys are now growing a remote team, um, definitely. Yeah, but the challenge is trying. To, how do you get everybody else on the team to participate yeah. in this? And like, it's a struggle for me. And obviously, I'm sure you would understand this better than anyone else. It's just about getting it somehow situated within your routine, right? Where you're like, yeah. just like you have scheduled time for anything else in your work day, just being like, okay, this time is time slotted that I'm going to spend on, you know, X, Y, Z, but it's just hard to, I feel like the first step is just, you know, setting that time aside, yeah. even for the first week or two, you're just setting that side, like time aside and just like looking at that yeah. slot on your calendar being like, I'm supposed to do something right now. But I think it's just like making that first step to just be like, okay, what am I doing? What am I thinking? Like I've gotten in the habit of jotting down notes every time I think of something or if I have a thought that I want to share and I'm like okay this is just a very very small basic thought right now but I feel like it could be fleshed out down the line you know but just getting in that mindset so are you experimenting first and then you're gonna try to get the team on board or uh are is everybody trying right now I haven't I've... um <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely, I think I'm trying a little bit more right now, but I would love to experiment myself and then, you know, share my findings with the team. But I also, I think marketing is like largely based on experiments. So the more people experimenting, yeah. the better, right? Like, I think that will provide incredible value for us, especially since on LinkedIn, for instance, my colleagues, they have different connections than I do. And they're like, maybe connected to more cybersecurity type people than I am when I'm connections than them. So just having our, you know, toes dipped in multiple areas would be really beneficial. Yeah. But yeah, just taking that first step. I, I love that you're mentioning it. Yeah, just if the first step is going to be just carving out half an hour a day or less, I feel like half an hour is a lot, but um, sometimes it takes half an hour to get things out of your brain. No, or like sometimes it takes half an hour just to realize that you've, you know, what you've done or what you've got yourself into being like, okay, yeah. I need to figure this out. Okay. Yeah. But it, it is kind of about getting that momentum and saying, okay, done is better than perfect. Yes. I have, um, I'm also trying to encourage my team to post on LinkedIn, but it's not something that you can force people to do, especially if their jobs is to do something else. Um, and they're not used to being active on social media. You really can't force that upon people, but I'm trying to get them into it. And, um, and like balancing it with your other work too. And like yeah. how much time you should be spending on it. And yeah, like what is good enough versus perfect. Cause I'm definitely a perfectionist perfectionist. Sorry. So it, you know, I, I struggle with, yeah, just, getting it done done is better than it's, you know it's it's a hard it's a habit to get past perfectionism really I have also um um one of my project managers she's really good she always wants to do everything really well she's a perfectionist and then she comes to me with an idea that she's been working on for a week about a LinkedIn post like is this good should I say it this way should I say it that way and I say I spend five minutes writing a LinkedIn post just yeah. <laughs> Just get it out there. Get it out there. It doesn't have to be perfect because then you have to write another one tomorrow. So <laughs> Exactly. There's always another chance. It's just that yeah. like, you forget that someone's going to look, you know, they're going to scan it really quickly. They're going to maybe click to read more, but they're not going to, they're not going to criticize it as harshly as you would. Exactly. And it's kind of the, the point of it isn't to write the most perfect thing. It's to share your voice and start connecting with people and start yeah. being seen. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's interesting to see where does that overlap with maybe blog content that you're creating? How perfect does that have to be? Because that's a little bit different. It stays on the internet forever. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard to find that balance. I do try to do things by done is better than perfect, but try your, your best. Yeah. And I, I feel like as long as, like, as long as it has value, right? It still needs to have value. Like I feel like some people get in the habit of being like, okay, done. I just need to get it done. I'm trying to do it, you know, every day for instance, and then just posting whatever, but 
still provide value because even if you're growing your personal brand, you want to be growing it to the right audience and yeah. for the right reasons, right? You don't want to just be like, okay, great. I got all these followers. I'm doing really well. I'm growing my personal brand, but I'm posting a lot of fluff. Like you still want yeah. those like, valuable pieces that people can be like, this is great. Like I, if I'm on LinkedIn and I save someone's post, cause I'm like, Oh, what a good idea. I want to try that. Like that's a really valuable piece of content. <laughs> <laughs> um it's he really wants to be in the podcast yeah. um yeah that's such a, a challenging thing to find the right balance it's like don't yeah. overthink it think about it in the right way you know exactly. don't think like oh uh, it, it's hard to find the balance between is this going to serve somebody am I actually thinking about putting myself into somebody's shoes solving a, a real problem or, or talking about something real <laughs> Uh, that people are actually going through or am I just posting just to post? And then it's also like, exactly. well, don't wait six months until you have the idea for the best thing to post, still do it regularly. So finding that balance is, is a challenge. And also, you know, it's okay to show personality. Like that's kind of what's cool about people sharing and, you know, building their personal brands, but also representing a company is like, it kind of lets you, into the company and the personalities involved yeah. with the company and the people you're actually working with. Um, but again, it's all about the balance, right? Cause like yeah. people don't fully care. Like I'm, I'm not naive. I know that my personality isn't like the number one priority of a lot of people out there, but like the <laughs> value I provide would be. So it's just like yeah. having balance in your post as well. Yeah.